Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, culture, media, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like, and share the program so that your friends can know exactly what you're doing this morning. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And in both cases, make sure you hit the notification button so that you can get alerts as soon as we go live so you can be there while history is happening. Also, please take a moment, go to fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. It's a very cool place to go get all sorts of cool 2A swag. Uh, we're always uploading new designs for T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, all different types of stuff. Uh, and know that not only, are you sp not only will you be looking good, but you'll also be actually supporting the Second Amendment as every penny that you spend goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms so you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. Now, a lot of people think of California and they think of California as an anti-gun state, a place where obviously because of the politicians that we elect that we don't necessarily believe in the right to keep and bear arms. Well, uh, there are some new statistics out, or not necessarily new statistics, but there's there's a statistical trend that people don't that people fail to recognize that would probably, well, probably cause one to question that idea, and that has to do with the number of new firearms owners in the state of California. Uh, there was an article that was uh, recently in the Washington Free Beacon, where. Uh, they discussed the actual number of new firearms owners. And what they recognized in this particular article was the drastic increase over the last decade of, of not just firearm sales, but the number of people who actually uh, own firearms. So I wanted to have I wanted to have the author of this particular piece come on come on the show and talk a little about it. Talk a little bit about it. That was easy for me to say, wasn't it? So with us, we have a good friend of the show, Mr. Stephen Gatowski with Gatowski. I did get it right. Ha! Huh? Gatowski right. with the Washington Free Beacon. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you, Craig? Dude, I am doing phenomenal. I am doing phenomenal. You know, despite the fact that we are constant, our rights are constantly under attack here in the state of California. Uh, at least I am above ground and still able to fight. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit. Tell us a little about a little bit about uh, about this about this piece and that that you guys did. Yeah, sure. So this this data comes from a report that the California Attorney General put out uh, just recently, um, which is actually about uh, California's system for. Um, trying to track down people that they know are uh, prohibited uh, persons, but who they know had purchased a gun in the past. Um, California has a system where essentially it tries to identify all of the gun owners in the state and then run their names against all of the people who've become prohibited persons in the state. Um, and then essentially the idea is to you know, check up on those people, make sure they don't have guns anymore. Um, uh, of course, the the problem is that they're they're uh, they're not very good at it. I guess they're, they're, or at least they're. <laughs> you mean the California DOJ is not very good at something? Yeah. Well, we, at the computer very, programs, they're... lists, following the law. Um, I could go on and on. <laughs> at the very least, they're they're slow at getting through this list of people that they have identified as potentially illegally in possession of firearms. Um, to the point where more people are actually eliminated from the list just by having fallen off of it because their prohibition was temporary for whatever reason, like some sort of restraining order, perhaps, um, you know, a, a red flag law uh, <clears throat> um, situation where, where they were only temporarily prohibited. And so more people fall off the list that way than people actually being contact, uh, contacted by law enforcement who are responsible for for uh, going through these these people and ensuring that they're not, uh, you know, illegally in possession of firearms. Um, but so in that report, there's a section where they talk about uh, known firearm owners or uh, you know people that the number of people in California that they believe um, from records of background checks, both uh, universal back you know on private sales and on um, you know sales through dealers. Uh, <clears throat> 
the number of, of gun owners in in the state. Uh, that's how they get they get to that. And the interesting thing about it, as the graph that you showed uh, just a minute ago um, tells us, uh, is there the number has increased dr uh, like dramatically over the past uh, twenty years or so, uh, or really the past decade. And that's pretty fascinating given uh, the state of gun control laws in California over the past decade, because uh, as, as you and your viewers know uh, all too well, presumably, um, California has really tightened its gun laws in the last 10 years. Uh, they've passed all sorts of restrictions on you know assault weapons, magazine sizes, uh, what kind of handguns you can buy legally, just everything you could possibly think of, but hasn't had an effect or at least a, a severe effect on the number of people purchasing firearms in the state. And, not, and we're not just talking about the number of sales overall, which have also, also increased, but we're talking about the number of individual gun owners. Right. People who, people who either didn't yeah. own guns before. I mean, basically mm -hmm. these are people, and by the way, this is probably not even including people who moved into the state and, and owned guns and brought them with them. These are just people who didn't own a gun before and have bought guns in the state of California. Yeah, potentially. I mean, it's everyone who's uh, all the guns that are registered, um, obviously, are included in this list, as well as um, all of the background checks that have been conducted in the state over the last 10 years, which in theory, it should encompass all sales because obviously uh, background checks are required on all dealer sales and then also on all private sales in California. Although the, the latter part is is newer, um, so it doesn't necessarily encompass all of those uh, people. So there's certainly, I, I think the the idea is that it doesn't it does this this list doesn't include everyone in California who's a gun owner, but it should capture a large number of those people. And from what we've seen, the number has increased uh, more than twofold over the last decade. Right, and it's you know in, like you said, Dave. They, you know, between a magazine ban, between the ban on on semi-automatic centerfire rifles with detachable magazines, um, the the what I I call it the semi-automatic new model semi-automatic handgun ban, uh, otherwise known as the not unsafe handgun roster here in the state of California, um, they've worked to make it tougher on on dealers. Uh, they, I mean, they've they've. In particular, local municipalities through zoning laws have made it harder for firearms retailers to either be in business or stay in stay in business or even even get into uh, even open up a brand new shop in the state of California. You have gun ranges and gun stores all throughout the state that are closing because, well, aside from just being a bad place to do business, you've also got. You know, you've also got it. It's a bad place to be in that particular business. And yet and still, I, 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 what I happen to believe, I happen to believe that people are realizing that the right to keep and bear arms is suspect and they want to make sure they get one before they won't be able to get one. Yeah, you know, that's what uh, a number of the people that I spoke to for the story uh, said. I believe uh, Brandon Combs from FPC was one of those. People who thought that was probably a motivating factor. Um, I also spoke with a gun researcher, um, a professor who thought mostly along the same lines that that these sort of laws actually drive buying, um, and the threat of new laws, new restrictions drive buying even more. Um, and so that probably has an effect. Um, you know, it's it's interesting how much of an effect though apparently in california because it's just the the number of gun owners has increased just at a, at a staggering rate um especially when you would compare it to the, the rate of gun sales uh nationally or at least background checks um you know it, it's pretty fascinating and then also you know another point that was made is uh while while california's gun ownership has increased a great deal um it's still according to this data, relatively um, small compared to the rest of the country, you know, on average. Uh, I believe that the average, you know, if you look at polling on the question of whether or not someone owns a gun, you know, you, you get somewhere in the 30 to 40% range. Um, and this data says that California is only in 
you know, about 8%. So I think there was a lot of skepticism as well that, that this, even this number, as much as it's increased in this uh, California uh, report, it's still probably underrepresents how many people actually own guns in California. There's yeah. probably a, a significant um, portion of the population there that, that does own a gun, but isn't included in this data. Well, you know, it's funny, and I, you know, walk in the halls of the Capitol, a number of even Democratic or, or anti staffers who work for anti gun members will come over and, like, almost like whisper in my ear, like they're telling me a, a, a dirty little, you know, like, you know, they're coming out of the gun closet, like, I, 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 I like to shoot too. You know, they'll tell me they own, they'll tell me that they own guns and that they like to shoot, but they dare not say it around some of their, uh, their uh, colleagues because, well, they're afraid of being ostracized. Oh, anyway, hey, tell folks how they can uh, how they can read up on you and follow the work follow your work at the Free Beacon. Sure, uh, you just go to freebeacon.com, f r e e b e a c o n dot com, uh, and you can see my my work published there. Or you can follow me on Twitter at uh, Stephen Gutowski. That's S T E P H E N G U T O W S K I. I know it's a crazy Polish last name, but uh, that's <laughs> that's where you can find me. Stephen, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, you know, I really appreciate the work that you do. And I know that it, uh, you know, it, once again, there's not a whole lot of, of publications out there that focus on original reporting of, of Second Amendment news. Uh, and you happen to work for uh, one of the best. So thank you so much once again uh, for the work that you do. And I, I, I enjoy reading you all the time. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. You take care, sir. All right, folks. Well, hey, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. We very much appreciate you guys tuning in, uh, sharing this video, and telling your friends about the Firearms Policy Coalition and Coffee with Craig. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.